We have another question of a woman who says that she recently discovered her husband had a, an affair for a year and a half with mm -hmm. a woman at work, but he has ended the affair. He wants to work on the marriage and, and save it. Good. So she says, what are some techniques that can help me get over and stop overthinking what they did or talked about? I don't want my actions or anger to hurt or our future. Now, what I would love for you to do is answer this question from the sense of a lot of times we see that marriages come back together after an affair or some issue that has happened. They'll mm -hmm. come back together, but then it's after that coming back together that can lead to more problems in the marriage yeah. because the spouse who was hurt is angry, resentful, things like that. So mm -hmm. how would you answer her question for her not to be the problem going okay. forward? First of all, it's okay to be angry. It really is. Mm -hmm. But what Kimberly just alluded to, and this happens a lot, is that people tend to swallow the anger while they're trying to get their spouse to come back. Mm -hmm. Then when the spouse comes back and things are actually headed in the right direction, finally the anger comes out and mm -hmm. they explodes and they attack and, and they're vicious sometimes. Yeah. And that'll destroy it. So it's okay to feel the anger. It really is. It's also okay to want your spouse to really understand what you feel. But understand when you first get back together, think about it like you're now dating. What I mean is this, you're in the early stages of a new relationship with your spouse. Don't hit him or her with the heavy stuff now. Don't. I mean, for a while, just try to get along with each other, try to be at peace, try to enjoy each other, try to be able to laugh about things, whatever. Now, when you finally get to the point where it's deeper, more involved, when you've gotten further into this new relationship, then you can say things like, uh, may I tell you about the pain I felt because I, I just want you to understand. And it becomes very important that they understand, but that's not phase one, that's kind of phase two. Now, what I heard from this particular woman, Kimberly, is that uh, she's thinking about the two of them together. And I'm assuming that that's thinking about, you know, when they went off and picnics with each other or whatever the heck they did, that she's picturing them having a good time. But I'm also thinking she's probably imagining them in bed with each other. Mm -hmm. and, and in your mind, you start comparing yourself to that and thinking, how is he feeling about me? Is he thinking about her while he's making love to me, etc.? Okay, how do you stop that? You have to do it consciously. Now I realize sometimes it's hard to take control of our own thoughts. I do. So maybe you want to see somebody to help you understand how to process this. A good counselor or therapist can help you do that. Our, co our coaches, if you want to contact us and talk to our coaches, can help you think that through. But it ultimately is going to become a matter of willpower. I mean, it's not just going to poof, disappear. You could get some medicine to calm you down. And if you need that in the short term, see your physician and get it. But Ultimately, it's going to be a matter of you thinking about the good, not the bad. Mm -hmm. You say, what do you mean the good? It's over. He's picked me over her. Mm -hmm. He sees that being with me is the place he should be, the place that he wants to be. He wants to make a life with me. And so whenever your mind starts straying toward what he did with her and those kinds of things, you take that captive. And how do you do it? You start thinking and thinking to yourself like this. He's with me. We can make a good life together and maybe even start daydreaming about how things can be and will be if you keep doing the right things. Mm. So if you need to imagine the short term, your doc will know about how to do that. If you need counseling or therapy, find a good one. But ultimately it's gonna come down to the fact that there's no magic answer. You're going to have to deal with this and focus your mind. Yeah, absolutely. And not to totally geek out, but I did a little bit of research over or about the brain and the brain pathways, these neuron firing pathways that are in our brain. And just looking at it from that point of view, the more we worry or fixate on certain issues and anxiety and let that happen, it puts these certain pathways in our brain that become used to firing. Kind of like if you're driving down a dirt road, the more you drive down it, it's going to clear the rocks out of the way. It's going to be easier to drive down. And that becomes the one that is most used. Whereas if you have to re it's really like reprogramming your brain. You're starting mm -hmm. to fire off different pathways and you're wanting to go more positive, wanting to think that way. If you don't focus on, like Joe was saying, doing those things, being more positive, taking those thoughts out of your mind, replacing them with something else, then it's never going to redo those pathways, if you want to think of it that way. So the more you use that positive mindset, 
the easier it will become over time. So the next time one comes into your head, just think to yourself, it's okay that I think those things. Mm -hmm. It's human. Mm -hmm. But you know, I need to think about something else that's going to be better for me. Yeah. And then start focusing and thinking on the other thing. Yeah, I know it's easier said than done, mm -hmm. but it is doable. Yeah.